Today we're diving into a lovely winter landscape which I've named Winter Blues. But stick around, not only are we doing the entire underpainting from start to finish, I'll also be going live to do the colour layers on Sunday the 28th of January. Hi friends, I'm Marion Dutton and today I'll be covering the full start to finish underpainting of this lovely landscape and if you'd like to paint along with me you can grab your free tracing, references and PDF material list and I'll leave a link to that in the description box below. But that's not all. On the 28th of January, we will be painting the colour layers live together. So if you grab your tracing and get ahead and get prepared ahead, then you can paint alongside of me on that date. I'm really looking forward to it. It will be my very first ever YouTube live and I am really, really excited to paint along with you guys. Now let's get ready for the magic and start on this underpainting. But before we do, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Let's dive into the tutorial. Okay, so for this lovely little landscape that we're doing for our January YouTube tutorial, um, I'm using an eight by 10 canvas board. This is an eight by 10. Um, and you can see here the two XG, the two times G basically means two times gesso. So I've actually given this a two coats of gesso so it's a nice smooth surface and I have put a video on on how I actually gesso these boards and I'll leave a link to that in the description box below. So I've printed my tracing and I'm using, um, I've used an A3 printer, I'm lucky enough to have an A3 printer and this particular image now is perfectly scaled because I've used Rapid Resizer. And again, I've put a full tutorial on YouTube on how to use Rapid Resizer to get the scale of your tracing to the exact size of your canvas. So if you wanted to make this a much bigger painting than I'll be demonstrating on, then Rapid Resizer is absolutely wonderful for putting the dimensions of your canvas and getting everything to scale. And as you can see with this one, it is perfectly um, to scale to this particular canvas. Now, like I said, I have a A3 printer, but when you use rapid resizer, you can actually do it on a standard printer paper and it basically tiles for you and then gives you grid lines so that you can match up. So you can still scale to any size of canvas, even if you have a standard printer. So that would be a UK A4. So I'm going to cut this out now. So now this fits perfectly to my canvas. I have cut just a little extra off the top so that I'm able to tape this down. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually scribble on the back and I like to use these Geoconda Artist LEDs. Um, I like them because they're in brown and basically they, when I do the underpainting using burnt umber or raw umber, um, it, they really do um, disguise the pencil lines. I like to scribble all over the back. And once I've done that, I'll take a paper towel and distribute that lead all over the back of the image. Carefully line your image back up and then I'll take some tape, some masking tape and I like to go all the way over the top and also tuck that under so I know that that won't move but it also means as I'm tracing my lines I can keep lifting this back to be able to see the lines underneath. Now, as an alternative to this, you can use something like Trace Down and slide that underneath your tracing and work in the same way. So I'm going to go over my lines now. I'm using a red pen and I'm going to speed the footage up for you at this point. Now 
Now this is a relatively simple outline so if you wanted to freehand that with a pencil you feel free to do that as well. I just wanted to provide this tracing for you for those of you who were not as confident with your drawing skills. Once you're happy you want to remove your tracing now at this point you need to seal the lines before we move on to doing the underpainting. I'm going to be doing the underpainting entirely in oils. Now there is an option, you can actually do this underpainting, it is very straightforward. Um, you can do the underpainting using acrylics if you prefer and then putting the oils on top when we come to do the live colour layers. I'm going to be doing my traditional oil painting underpainting um, just to show you how it all works and with that we do need to seal our drawing lines. Now you have again several options. You can use a workable fixative. If you're going to use this to seal your lines make sure you only spray very very lightly and also make sure you spray this outdoors. Alternatively you can go over with a paint pen marker, this is an acrylic paint pen marker and then once this is dried you'll be able to go over the top with oils and alternatively if you don't have anything like this you can take a little bit of burnt umber acrylic, thin it down with water and use a liner brush or a rigger, um, a nice fine rigger to go over your lines. The main thing is if you're choosing to do an oil underpainting make sure you seal your pencil lines. I'm going to use the FW Mixed Media. Inside here I have some uh, burnt umber acrylic and I'm going to use this for doing my outlines. And once again at this point I'm going to speed the footage up for you. Okay, so I've just run the hairdryer over that acrylic paint um, and now it's completely dry and we're ready now to switch to doing the underpainting in oils. Okay, so for the underpainting I'm using raw umber oil paint and I'm also going to be using some lean medium. The one I like to use is Zest It Lean Medium. But if you don't have that, you could use a 50-50 split of something like linseed oil, walnut oil with some thinners. This is following the fat over lean rule. Now I like to take a little puddle of that medium to one side and then into that I'll take some of that raw umber. I'm trying to go for a really nice creamy mix so that we can put a wash over the entire canvas. Now I'm taking a sponge and I'm going to dispense with the paint that's on the brush and then I'm going to pick up that sponge and then dispense in the corners. Um, I always like to get rid of the, the excess in the corners and then go over my lines. We're looking to establish a middle tone for our underpainting. Once I've got the initial layer on, I'll turn that sponge over and use that dry side just to mop up that excess medium. We're always looking for a really controlled amount of medium. Now going forward, we'll be just using the dry oil paint. And I like to remove any excess of um, that medium from my palette, so I'm not tempted to go into that. So I'm using a soft dome blender here or a smoosher brush from Rosemary's and Co. And I will leave a link to the brushes in the description box below. Um, the smoosher brushes from Rosemary are wonderful for doing this underpainting technique. And as you can see now, I'm starting to establish some of those mid-tones. My main aim for the underpainting is to establish four basic tones, a light, a medium light, a medium dark and a dark. 
and I'm using that tonal sketch that's underneath um, as my guide for applying these basic tones. Now at this point I am going to speed up the footage because we are only using that one um, colour, that burnt, uh, sorry, that raw umber, or you could use burnt umber as well, that's a colour I often use as well. Um, the nice thing about these earth tones is they are fast drying and they are absolutely perfect for doing the underpaintings, um, doing this tonal underpainting. So I'm going to speed the footage up for you now, but I will keep jumping on and telling you exactly what I'm doing as I'm doing it. So at this point I've switched to a typist razor and I cover all of the tools that I use in my underpainting versus no underpainting tutorial and I'll leave a link to that in the description box below. And here I'm erasing that lovely light that you can see in the sky. So now we've got those mid-tones and some of those lighter tones, it's time to start adding the darker tones for the tree trunks. And here I'm just using a slightly thicker mix of that raw umber to make sure that it's darker than those lighter tones in the background. I'm repeating that darker tone for the leaves and trying to establish some of those darker leaves. And again, I'm keeping my brush marks very, very loose. Remember, this is a map for the colour layers. It's not about being totally accurate or totally precise. It's about creating a map that will help you when we come to add those colours. Keep your brush marks nice and loose and try and create the illusion of those leaves. Now on to the fir trees in exactly the same way. These are darker than what's behind. So I'm going with a smaller flat brush at this point and creating some very, very loose marks to represent those fir trees.
here I'm switching to a putty eraser so that I can continue erasing some of those lighter tones that we can see in the background where the snow is hitting those distant trees. And again, I'll switch to that typist eraser again just to erase. And this is why I do love doing the underpaintings in oils, is that you're able to jump back and forth, um, erasing and adding on. Um, whereas with acrylics, you can do this in acrylics, but you cannot erase quite the same way. You will also see me constantly flapping over the canvas with a paper towel and that's just to make sure I remove any of that eraser dust. And again you can see I've switched back to that putty eraser, started to lift off a little bit of the illusion of some snow on those fir trees in the distance. I'm constantly jumping back and forth. I'm erasing that lighter area in the foreground and I'm also erasing some of that light, that sunlight that's hitting on those trees. I'm adding a little bit of detailing in the background by adding some distant trees and also putting some of the detailing on the main trees as well. We're coming towards the end now, so at this point I'm really just looking to establish if I've got enough tonal range in there um, in terms of those main four values and which we have, we have a light, we have a mid light, and then we have a middle dark, and we have a very darker color as well. So we have that full range in there, ready to um, add those color layers on top. Here you can see me just adding a little bit of those extra details. Now I'm back to using that putty eraser to start to lift off some of that lighter tone that you can see on these trees. So you've got that dark underneath and then we've got some light on top where the snow is just resting on those leaves. Constantly using different tools to do the erasing with. You will also see me using a sandpaper block and this allows me to just keep my erasers nice and clean. I can rub the eraser over the block and it removes some of that paint to keep the eraser nice and clean so I can continue erasing. So at this point we are at the end. I make sure that all my dust, eraser dust, is all removed uh, and everything's nice and ready. And you want to let this completely dry before we switch to adding the colour layers. And typically with the lean painting medium and either using burnt umber or raw umber, your underpainting should be dry overnight. I really do hope you've enjoyed this underpainting tutorial. Don't forget to mark your calendars for the 28th of January and paint along live with me as we add the colours to this underpainting. Again, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe if you haven't already done so. And don't forget to hit that bell notification so you don't miss out when I upload a new video. Once again, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.